Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about 1917. 1917 is interesting and or notable because of both its gimmick and its biggest selling point, which is that it's uh, meant to look like at least that it's shot in one continuous take. Or at least it's uh, made in a way that makes it look like it's a lot of series of very long takes or very long shots or big tracking shots, basically, throughout the entire film. Although that has been done quite a bit recently, and although, you know, obviously it's trying to say one continuous shot, but like, in realistically that is very rarely true <laughs> they're using sort of editing tricks and those are so hard to pull off that like i get it i'm not really judging you or i'm just saying that's how they are but 1917 is able to do a world war one movie in an interesting way world war one films i think in terms of cinema we sort of don't get into world war one a lot in the modern context seems to be coming up a little bit more either with this or wonder woman but uh in the silent era it was quite a big thing uh because that was the war that like just happened and stuff and so they wanted to talk about that much like how we want to talk about world war ii vietnam the iraq war or whatever the the current war that happened in our society and this is very different in terms of maybe it's a little more like what you would expect from a World War II movie because World War II films would be about a particular mission that was notable. Uh, Midway, for example, that that is a battle that was important to World War II. They made a movie about it. Honestly, think they probably, we don't need any more World War II movies, frankly, uh, but um, that's kind of been the, the difference between most wars is World War II was specifically about exact wars and battles and things like that. This is actually about a real life one. It's about Operation Alberich, which was a real operation, real skirmish in 1917. And it was actually told by Sam Mendes, I believe by his great grandfather and his experiences uh, being a soldier in World War I. And it's basically about two guys, one of which is selected and he brings along his friend. And they're told that they have to deliver a message to stop this operation from happening because they believe that the Germans have retreated and moved back and there's not going to be very many of them but it's a total trap and they're going to ton thousands of people will be slaughtered if this operation happens so they have to go with a message uh, because their telephone lines are cut they're given a message by Colin Firth by a important military person and then they have to go through kind of the German line the former German line to go to tell these people not to attack and one of the soldiers his brother is going to be in that attack and will most likely be murdered. They go on this journey to hopefully get there in time to stop this from happening and save thousands of lives. And that mission sounds like something that you'd want to see the journey and it works very well in the one take kind of idea or one shot or whatever. I think one thing that works to this advantage and has worked to Sam Mendes's advantage ever since he's been a director is he's very good at picking great cinematographers, whether it be Conrad Hall or uh, who shot this film, Roger Deakins. And I am a huge fan of Roger Deakins. He is one of the greatest cinematographers of all time. Seeing a kind of one shot thing from him specifically to me was like why I was seeing this movie. Sam Mendes is smart because he learned fairly early on and he got lucky working with Conrad Hall, who's an amazing cinematographer, and then picking other great cinematographers since then that his movies look absolutely gorgeous. I might not 100% be in love with every one of them or something, but I love going to see his movies because every one, even the, the one that, that John Krasinski's in, it looks very beautiful, but it's shot by a different DP who's very good. At, he's just, he's very good at picking cinematographers. It's like, it, it's like his skill. He's very good at it. I think how Roger Deakins and Sam Mendes work together is really beautiful because what uh, Roger Deakins is able to do while moving the camera and his framing is just insane like he's able to still do Roger Deakins framing there's like one part where the camera's following them all over the place and then he stops on the house and there's like a silhouette of one of them with this empty farmhouse and there's a silhouette of one of the soldiers and in the background in the light outside of the dark house you see another soldier and I was like that's like such a Roger Deakins shot but they able, that he was able to plan that out and still have his trademark cinematography. You're more impressed as the gimmick and the planning and how they're able to plan out certain shots and be able to do certain shots and be able to still make this home look incredibly photographic and dramatic in ways that I think um, it definitely was a, a difference from Roger Deakins. I, I would say I most know him for his darker, you know, like dimmer, darker lit kind of movies like you know Blade Runner or the Coen Brothers stuff or the assassination of Jesse James or things like that and you only really get that in one scene which is honestly absolutely gorgeous what he does with light of course what he does I mean especially with Sam Mendes where you know that whole end sequence of Skyfall 
And during that sequence, just the way he uses the light and the plane going over him and this light that like drapes all over everything and illuminates this whole world. And you kind of like don't want to get into the light because you're afraid of what it'll expose and how he will be exposed if he is seen. And it's just, it's just a striking, striking sequence. It's probably my most favorite sequence in the film. Maybe that's my preference for what I like of Roger Deegan's, but whatever. It is interesting though, with the one shotness uh, of this, this does feel very much like an open world video game. I don't know Sam Mendes' life. I don't know if he plays, he's a gamer or something like that, but uh, this felt honestly a little more like Son of Saul to me. Um, personally, I thought that's what it was really trying to achieve, that kind of idea of understanding this whole world. And I think the concept kind of works within like what this journey is, where this is this intense journey of these two guys experiencing this world that, that they never thought they'd be into, they never thought they'd live through, but they have to like keep going and keep going. And I think the whole kind of like movement of the journey keeps the film going in a certain way it works within that the whole theory of the cinematography works with the theory of the story works with the theory of the journey that all kind of in tandem works together but it, it did feel very much like you know an open world video game and much like it reminded me of son of saul i kind of wonder how influenced they are by son of saul throughout this because i don't i don't think a lot of these people who made this don't seem to me like they're playing gta on the weekend i think they're influenced by that film uh, maybe you know even hardcore henry but i doubt that but uh it, it sort of reminded me of son of saul a lot um and it says a lot about how our storytelling has evolved where storytelling now because of how people understand and have experienced stories through video games uh and gaming uh that's obviously going to make its way into filmmaking much much how like comic books have and uh theater and television and so forth which is kind of a natural evolution thing and i think that's interesting that taking something from 100 years ago and making it into that but since son of saul did that with a concentration camp why can't you do it with world war one I? I think son of saul kind of tackles a little bit more in a little more interesting way and this is more of a technical gimmick feat of itself um, and that's, you know, certainly like where the, there's a plane crashing and the action sequences, but also just how they just frankly did it in itself is just awe-inspiring and impressive. I mean, it's one thing to do Birdman, but I think this is maybe as a technical feat a lot bigger than that because they're able to just do a lot of like kind of technical acting while having emotional arcs throughout the whole thing while having this like very plotted out thing. I mean, the, the pre-production must have been much longer than the actual production of this, but uh, I, I thought it was just a very, very kind of impressively made World War One film. I think in some ways the gimmick almost overpowers the movie, uh, but I also think uh, it's a hell of an experience to see in the theater. I think it's very much a theater movie, um, or if you have a big screen or something, because you really do get like kind of wrapped up in it, you know, like you do with a good mission film. And I don't think World War One has enough of those. It's more about what that war did to people. And they do do that a lot, you know, showing like the corpses they have to go through, the, the horrors they have to witness, you know, what it had done to the ground, like, you know, how things like the stasis of World War One and everything like that. And, I, you know, it is interesting, like, not having something that shows the arc of we were innocent before we went to war and then we came back and we we're, like, totally destroyed, which is what happened. That was, like, the lost generation. And this doesn't really address that at all. Much like World War II rarely does in those mission films. That, you know, you get best years of our lives, but most of the time you don't get that. In this World War One thing, I don't think it's romanticizing it. It does a good job of showing, like, the horrors of it while not actually dealing with the idea of the, the past that they grew up in what the war did to them and after this is like the goings on this is the present of their reality their reality that is this war that they are stuck in when they go on this journey they're like it's it's totally like the idea of like i'm saving my brother i'm doing the right thing and the horrors and the awfulness that they have to go through is kind of erasing their naivete even though you know they're still like kids and it's still like thriving inside them but the real world is so stamping that down you can't believe it it's quite the experience of a film and one thing i, I really like about this film is I don't think there's a lot of films other than like blockbusters or something that really want to be an experience and be a rich cinematic thing and I think actually you know we should really appreciate what Sam Mendes is doing for this because this gives people a reason you know to go to the theater but it gives them an experience like you can say oh yeah it was one shot and like I can't believe they did that and then like you know Mark Strong's in there midway through and one of the actors from Gavin and Stacey is in it which was <laughs> 
which definitely took me out of it. The other movie stars was like, yeah, I don't know, Cumberbatch, sure. But like this guy, I was like, whoa. Uh, my wife and I just looked at each other like, oh my God, from Gavin to Stacey. But I, I like the experience of that. And, and you don't get that enough in the theater. This like full, like I saw an experience of it. Much like, you know, it's, it's like a theme park ride. It's like a theatrical experience. It's like all of that. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I think that's something that cinema can absolutely do. And this is a very cinematic film. And it's presented in a way like Deacon's doesn't really do these one shot things sam mendes did with specter at that opening sequence which by the way i mean specter not a great movie but that opening is really amazing i did think i was more impressed by that opening in specter which i definitely watched anytime someone brings up and i've been thinking about a lot didn't watch before i shot this review that one shot in the opening of specter um i think i'm more impressed by that than this even though i probably should be more impressed with this but it's just that like there's so much of it you kind of like can't process like like all the logistics of this like makes me want to cry that seems like a lot of work like doing a, a one shot thing i did one in like film school and it does not not that it's comparable but just doing that took forever i can't imagine what it was like shooting this thing but it does feel like kind of like grand old uh epic david lean type filmmaking and i've heard that's sort of like what it was like shooting that but they kind of do it in a more modern sensibility but supposedly i heard in one interview that the longest sam mendes says the longest shot take is eight minutes the editor said six minutes so theoretically i guess it could be made on shot on film and i know deacons has shot with both but i'd imagine because of the cost and everything and how many people that like there's some shots where like the shot from the trailer where everyone's running to the left side of the screen and he's running towards us like just the idea of that that's such a cinematic like dramatic kind of shot any film i appreciate the cinematography for and deacons i kind of definitely do uh i kind of fell more into that than maybe the story but i still find myself really interested in the story i do like mission world war ii movies so in some ways i found it kind of refreshing to see one done from a world war one perspective i would actually like to see more mission kind of films from other wars that like aren't world war ii because again i've had enough and i think this whole idea sort of worked in all of itself in some ways i think there are maybe more impressive uh films that do the mission thing even recently like dunkirk but at the same time, I still find what's going on in 1917 to be such a rich kind of experience. I'm very happy I saw it and I got to experience it in the theater. I don't know if I'm blown away like most people. I don't know if it like changes my life or anything. I, I don't know if it really gets to say more than being on this mission and what the mission is and what it represents and things like that. Although what that is and what that represents is a crazy adventure of a film. And I think when you get to that insane adventure of a film, that's enough of kind of a rich kind of story that in some ways, I don't know if I wanted it to tackle more. I'm kind of happy in terms of what it, it almost felt economical and minimalist in terms of what it's doing in sort of a story, but in sort of how it's presenting it, it's not doing that because maybe the adventure you're going on might be like single-minded in the idea of you going on it, but the world that you're going through that adventure in is not. I think that kind of shows it, you know, it might have the simplicity of like, hey, he grabs this thing and it has a use later, like a video game or something like that, but it often opens up to a more complex world that, you know, the idea of this person is here, what's that life like? You know, he has to kill this person to get beyond this, to save these people, the moral complexity of that. I think there's a lot kind of going on in this film between the margins that you can like sink your teeth into and just think about and be left with and like kind of the ideas of war and all that's going on and all you have to deal with and i think world war one had probably i don't know if maybe more than most wars but had a lot of that that we in our current society don't really think about or deal with the real impact of what was going on with that war in a lot of ways 1917 is just single-mindedness into the adventure of it and i understand how people definitely think that and say that but at the same time i think the world it exists in is not that and it's not trying to present that world in a simplistic way it's trying to show the bodies the horror all the different ways they're murdered all the different you know the casualties what it has done to the land what it's done to the people all the different facets of it ideas people that'll help them out help you know the flyers everything going on within that war and maybe it's just hinting at it but it's hints at it kind of opens you up to the world that they were really existing in and that's sort of the purpose of the whole film and the whole idea and theory of it is that you're going headlong into the world as they're experiencing it and kind of going through that you can't really get into the whole complexities of it you can kind of just hint at it and kind of deal with the fact that they sort of have to just go past those and keep keep existing and then maybe when they're sitting down later thinking about life they'll realize kind of the horrors that they fully witnessed and maybe that's the whole kind of 
journey of war is you go on these single-minded missions as an adventure and you kind of leave thinking of the complexities that you just had to go past and just think how you had to go through those complexities to end your mission but kind of realizing the trauma that you've witnessed and the bearing that you've had in your soul to kind of go past it all and kind of make a victory and is that victory as victorious when you think of all that you had to witness and all that you had to leave behind so if you have seen 1917 and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to